our brother George Simply. At this time, we'll have the tributes and the poem. The choir will now begin with the tributes. Thank you. 
Father, brother, uncle, husband, friend, God saw you getting tired. God saw you getting tired and the cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and he whispered, come to me. With cheerful eyes, we watched you. We watched you fade away. Although we loved you dearly, we cannot make you stay. Okay, I'll continue for him. In loving memory of my dear father, God saw you getting tired, and the cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you, and he whispered, Come to me. With tearful eyes, we watch you. We watch you fade away. Although we love you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he chose to take the best. It's lonesome here without you. We miss you more every day. Life doesn't seem the same. 
seems you have gone away when there's a sad and lonely and everything goes wrong. We seems to hear you whisper, cheer up and carry on. Each time we see your picture, we seems to smile and say, don't cry, I am in God's hand. We'll meet again someday. And now we'll have a tribute by his grandson in music.
Good afternoon once again, especially to the latecomers. Those of us who are in attendance are very fortunate to be here due to protocols which we have to adhere to. Before we begin, we are kindly asked to turn off our cell phones or please do otherwise. May we all stand, please. In the in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in our afflictions, and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we receive from him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the body of George with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life, for if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, George put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in glory. Amen. We begin with the entrance song, Blessed Assurance. First hymn on your leaflet on number 35 in moments of celebration. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let's pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through these mysteries, your servant George, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The readers, come forward. The first reading will be taken from the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 1, 23 to 27. And the theme for this reading, this I know that my avenger lives. This will be done by Petronilla Smith. Job said, ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument with iron chisel and engraving tool, cut into the rock forever. This I know that my avenger lives, and he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awakening, he will set me close to him, and from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part these eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. The word of the Lord. As a response to this reading, the choir will lead us in the song, The Lord's My Shepherd. Thank you. 
And now for the second reading, taken from St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. The theme, we shall stay with the Lord forever. And this reading will be done by Niall Dixon. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out to the co and uh, will call out the command, and the Lord Himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever with such thoughts as these. You should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. May we all stand for the proclamation of the gospel as we sing, Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. Father has blessed, says the Lord, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowd, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. This is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall, have their, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called the sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May we be seated, please. As human beings, we feel so comfortable, especially when we build a very wonderful house and we're living in it with a wonderful bed. If it is a, you are a man with a wonderful wife or a wonderful girlfriend, if you are a woman with a wonderful uh, boyfriend or a wonderful husband, and if God bless you with family, 
with wonderful children. You live the happy life, feeling so comfortable in your house, feeling so good because you have so far to build a house that you live in it, and the comfort you are looking for will finally come your own. We finally becomes your own because you have achieved a particular thing that at least even though you go out and suffer outside, by the time you return back to your house, at least the, your, the comfort of your bed and your house alone will make you happy and comfortable. So sometimes we choose, sometimes some persons choose to remain in that particular comfort zone without going out because they don't feel comfortable outside of their home. Because outside of their home, they may come in contact with a particular situation that they are not comfortable, but within their home, they may stay there and maybe certain things that they are capable of controlling within their home, they will be able to control it. And such will not give them problem. And so we feel comfortable because we build a wonderful house and we stay in it. But St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20, he, said, he told us loud and clear, Our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the blessing of God. So no matter how comfortable we feel that we are here, no matter how comfortable your home at this point may feel, St. Paul is reminding us that our home is not here, that that particular place that you are feeling so comfortable it's not even good as compared to the place that Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John told us that I am going to prepare for you. And so no matter how beautiful or no matter how uncomfortable that this place called the earth is, we shall certainly finish our journey here and turn around to go and meet our Creator. And this becomes so sudden. It depends on the nature of how God decides to call you. It may come so sudden. It may come gradually. It may come. Maybe you may be expecting it to come. So you may prepare yourself to all it. But for our brother George, he never saw that coming at that point in time, that even in that night. But it is good any time to live your life the way you're supposed to live it. With a, your, you, you're supposed to live a happy life. No matter how or what it takes for you to live your life. Live your plain life because you don't know when and how and where God will call you. Then for instance, that evening that our brother George sat with his wife, they had their phones laughing, giggling around, watching their television. Had they been he was there quarreling with his wife or insulting the neighbors or causing trouble in the community. And then after that he went to bed and died what would have happened but the poor man in his condition he was so contented with his life here on earth he lived a happy life that today i have no choice than to choose this gospel how happy are the poor in spirit this is the kingdom of heaven george was a happy man in his little way of serving and reaching out to humanity here on earth he tried his best to be a community person to be a society person, to be a countryman. There, was, there is no place on this island today. It is very unfortunate that Corona has brought this on us. This church wouldn't have been able, capable of accommodating the people that would have turned up to come here for the funeral. But we find ourselves in this situation. That is why we can see this little number, this little population in this church today. But that does not take away the popularity of our brother, our father, and our uncle and friend, that does not take away his popularity in the community. I was coming back from Castries one city afternoon before Beckson. I saw Mr. George heading towards Castries with loads in his van. I stopped him because he knew my vehicle even from a distance. I stopped him and I asked him, where are you going? I thought it's only Sufre V4 area and sortables that you know. Where are you heading to? He laughed and he said, Father Kenneth, you see, I'm going to drop this for this lady over there. After Bergson, he loaded those things from V4 and took them to, cast, to close castries. There was nobody accompanying him in that vehicle. 
to go and deliver these items. Dear sisters and brothers, I came to know George when I arrived here in 2012. In December of that 2012, we were to pay this yard in front of between the church and the, the, the school building. That was the year and that was the time I came across our brother and a friend and a, a father called George. And I thank teacher William so much who is here on the altar with me for introducing me to this honest and holy man. There was no time that I would call on George and he would not respond. And if he is not close to his phone, his wife will answer and say, the priest is calling you. And as soon as he gets my message, even when he was sick, he will tell his son, please go and do what the priest is looking for. The Lord is good. In his poor, in his poor life, George was at the service of everybody on this island. He was at the service of every human being. And that is why Jesus today in the gospel reminds us how happy are the poor in spirit. This is the kingdom of God. He had, even though he had nothing, he had everything. Because there was no place that George would go and he would not make the people within that area happy. I was constructing the presbytery here and George, I would call him even when I am short of cement on the side, I will call him, go to Susan's place and bring the cement for me in less than five seconds. Even if somebody has booked him up, he will just abandon that and rush here to deliver that. And on several occasions, he did that without asking for any pay. There was a day I insisted and put the money on the dashboard for him. When he came, he removed it and put it in the envelope and slotted it under the, the office door there. And he said, you are not building this place. When you finish here and you are going back to Africa, you will not take this place and go with it. You are doing it for us here in Sotibos and in St. Lucia. So I don't need to take money from you. But dear sisters and brothers, I found myself in construction again in Chazelle, the building opposite the church. And from the foundation to that point where that building is standing now, George was a single soul that kept on bringing materials for me until he could not make it anymore. And any time he got on the site, even when the workers were so tired, they would be motivated to come out and help him to offload those goods because of what? Because of his tongue. He will not use it to insult anybody. He will not use it to, 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 to chastise you. He will actually, as soon as George opened his mouth to say something, you will be moved to do even unthink unthinkable for him because of what he was a holy man and he knew how to treat every human being and that is why today happy at the point spirits this is a kingdom of god he had nothing but in his nothingness he was able to serve everybody it doesn't matter whether you have huge am amount of money in the accounts he had nothing if you are calling up, talking about millionaires on this island, he wasn't a millionaire. But God made him a millionaire in spirit. To reach and reach and touch so many lives here on earth. That is why it is so challenging. Happy the gentle, they shall have earth for their heritage. He was a gentleman. I remember one day, I stopped somewhere where he went off loads some to deliver goods for somebody. And this was what happened. The lady came out and said, Oh, George, I've been calling you over this morning and you, have, you, you neglected my call. See when you are arriving. And my workers, they could not do anything today. George now smiled. He said, But you know, when you called me, I was far away from V Fort. And by the time I got to V Fort, I had a flat tire. And by the time I fixed my flat tire to come here, that is why it is late. But please, don't be offended. And by the time God finished saying this, the woman was in laughter. And so, he was a gentleman. He never approached anybody with aggression so long as I knew him. That is my own testimony that I'm giving. 
And that is why it's so important for us, no matter how the situation is, on several occasions when George was leaving Sotibus to go down to Vifort, you will see his van loaded with passengers as if he was no more, it was no more's boss. But he never charged anybody any penny carrying them here to Vifort. And so in his gentleness on how to treat human beings, people hovers around George. Uh, even those who had money to go to bus from Vifo to come back, once it was time for them to come back, they would go and be waiting for George by the corner where they knew very well he must pass there. And every time he was coming up, his vehicle must be loaded with human beings. In his gentleness, he was able to reach out to everybody. He wasn't aggressive, no matter how he, his vehicle was loaded, he would gently move with people and drop them from one point to another until he reached his home. So a man like this, how will God not bless him? Yesterday, I was just talking to one of my friends, priest in America, and I told him, I have a funeral of a friend and a father today that I am going to celebrate. I'm wondering what, is, what I'm going to preach there. And you hear, you know what he told me? Say, people that you know so much, people that you, you, they touch your life, you don't need to prepare for their funeral. And I told him, Father, thank you for removing that burden away from my heart. And I went to sleep. Today, I found myself, when I got to the sacristy, I took the lectionary. And the first thing that came to my head was this gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12 the beatitude of jesus christ the teaching of jesus on the mountain and that is why in the in first john chapter 3 verse 1 think of the love that god has upon us by letting us be called the children of god and that is who we are and being a child of god does not always mean that you have to sleep on this altar like father kenneth being a child of God does not always mean that you have to be the one sweeping this church, opening the doors and ringing the bell and sweeping or winding the compounds here all the time. That is not being a child of God. All of us are children of God. By the virtue of our baptism, we were, when we were baptized, we became the children of God at that point. So becoming a child of God, you have to emulate what God has asked us to do. You have to live like God. And living like God requires minor things that you will leave a legacy behind for people who knows you. When you leave, what will the people say about you? What will be the testimony that people will be giving after when you leave? Mr. George, as I'm talking to you, it's not just me. Go to Shazam. Go to Sufre. Go to Vifort and stand there with his photo and say, how many of you know this man? you will not be able to count the number of persons that will know him. And nobody, on no account, nobody will say anything bad about a brother lying down there in that casket. So if the, if all the human beings are giving that wonderful and good testimony about you, what else? Because we are created in the image and likeness of God, and this is the God that we see here on earth. And the scripture tells us that whatever is bound on earth shall be considered bound in heaven and whatever is loose on earth shall be considered loose in heaven so our testimony i believe this afternoon god our father is listening to it and certainly he will open the gate of paradise for his this innocent man to rest in peace it is so painful because in a community like this where you have good people and they are living one after the other at the end of the day, you begin to ask yourself, when you are in a particular situation, where will you turn to? I went home in 2019 to bury my mother in December. And when I came back, I'm busy calling his number because I went to Vifort and I bought some items and I wanted those items to be delivered down here. And I'm busy calling his number, and nobody's answering. This is not him. The whole day he did not answer me. So, but I was so carried away with other things, and I couldn't imagine that he would be in. 
maybe he was sick or something. So I took it that maybe he was so busy and that is why he could not answer me at that time. Two days after that, I met teacher William, Mr. Isaac sitting on the altar there with me and I asked him, what, where is Mr. George? I've not seen him since I came back because normally when I finish morning mass in Shoze, as I'm heading up to Salty Boots for the second morning mass, I will see him with a load of people heading down to v -Fort. But since I came back, I've not seen him and I called his number, he did not answer me. So teacher William told me that George is no longer into that business. He say he's no longer understanding his health. He's no longer understanding his body. So he wants to rest. So to give me a good satisfaction, I was just driving down one certain evening and I saw his van. And I'm rushing behind that van, trying to stop the person, trying to stop the person driving, thinking that he was the one driving. I would stop him and make trouble with him. So when I got there, behold, I saw somebody is driving that van. And I kept quiet as if I, was, I, I, I took mumu peas before going there. I couldn't say anything. I drove past. So days after that, he sent a message to me that I should come and see him at the house. The Lord is good. I went there. He wasn't bedridden. He wasn't too sick. But he dropped his weight. And I sat down with him and his wife. We spoke at some length. And he told me he is not understanding himself. So he doesn't want to overwork himself. So he wants to stay indoor. At least he has worked so hard enough. And only him and his family alone, they could, they, his children alone, can take care of him. He doesn't need to go out there and be working. And by the way, that the children are mounting pressure on him not to be doing that business again. So please, I call you here to pray for me and his, my wife. And the woman sitting right there, his wife sitting right there, there is no time you pass across that area. And she will not ask you to pray for her. Pray for them. So my dear people, this is a man that we are going to miss in this community. We are going to miss him terribly. And the vacuum that has been created in our lives, my dear sisters and brothers, nobody, not even the children, not even the wife, will cover that vacuum that has been created. So the aim of us being here this afternoon is to pray and ask the almighty God to grant this beautiful soul internal rest in his kingdom through Christ our Lord. Internal rest grant unto George, O Lord. May his soul rest in peace. Shall we all stand as we offer our prayers to God our Father? Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. We pray for George, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. For our brother George, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. For our 
our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the rewards of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. falling asleep in the hope of rising again, especially those who die of COVID-19 and the other related diseases, that they may see God face to face on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Remember to pray for the family members and friends of our brother that they may be consoled in their grief, especially the wife and the children, by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. silence of our hearts, let us bring our prayers to God our Father as we offer them on behalf of our brother. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants. O Lord, free them, we pray, from all their sins. And make them share us in your redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. With permission from the family, we'll now have a collection to assist in the upkeep of our church. And whilst this is being done, we join in singing the hymn, Try a Little Kindness.
will now have the signing of the registers. The four witnesses, please come forward to the staple here to my right for the signing. And you are Petrolina Smith, Anastasia Smith, Ivania Smith, and Kirian Smith. And then we'll have a solo. Final commendation. Before we go our separate ways. Let us take leave of our brother George. May our fair way express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroy even death itself. We now sing all I ask of you. I'm 
Before this final commendation, I want to say something to you, the family members. You know your father was so close to his wife, your mother, and now he's no longer there. And a vacuum has been created so wide in the life of this woman standing there, your mother. Now, especially you, the boys, I am advising, don't, even if you are not here, don't miss calling your mother every day to check on her. That will give her more strength. And for some of you who are here, Petronella, I am referring to you precisely and the officer. Don't, no matter how busy you are, make it a point of duty to be frequenting that house. Because if you don't do it, you will have a different story to tell. I'm speaking from experience. Your mother is there, and she needs your company now more than ever. Our response shall be, receive his soul and present it to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, and just of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who call you take you to himself. May angel lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Internal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother George in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise again with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestow upon George in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn to us and listen to our prayers. Open the gate of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we are meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And we are Lazarus is poor no longer. May you have eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person dies, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. For some of us who will be remaining behind, let us remember our penitential service this afternoon and confession is beginning at 5 p.m. At this point, we take our brother's body to his place of rest. Just a gentle reminder, please pick up your personal belongings, your phones, your bottles, your tissues, etc. And I will sing, I'll fly away.
Thank you. 